Hi gang, Scott here. Continuing our march through the filters and on one effects, we're at replace color. And yes, you guessed it, this filter replaces one color with another. The, the, the naming of this one is just spot on. But we'll go through the sliders, how the filter works. I'll show you a couple of quirks and tweaks you may need to make after you've done a color replacement. And uh, then, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll just work on it through a, a sample photo here. Uh, really quick, though, if you are thinking about adding On One products to your toolkit, check the show notes. There is an offer code down there. Save you a little bit of money. Give me a little bit of support. Let me come back and do more videos like this. So uh, check that out. Now let's have a look at Replace Color. So here I am in the effects module, and I've got a couple of replace color filters already added. I've given descriptive names, but let me show you the filter in general, and then I'll come back to those tweaks that I've made already. So here's replace color. Like all of our filters, we have an overall strength opacity. We've got a few different styles. These are actually the only ones that are there. There's only four of them. They're all right there up at the top. But the magic of this filter is in the body of it. You've got target color and color change. Target color, this is the color that you want to change, the color that you want to replace with something else. So this is the one that you want to get rid of from your photo and change to something else. And the change to something else color is in color change. And you have uh, certain controls for both of these types of sliders here. So let's walk through it with an example because range and amount and then hue, saturation, brightness, these, um, these all kind of uh, you know, relate to choosing your, your colors here. So the workflow for this filter, first is you choose a target color. We're going to pick on the car. We're going to change this blue car to something else. So right now it's uh, I'm going to choose the bull picker. I'm going to choose a blue on the car. I'm just going to click once. And the color change, which is down here, has been set to this, you know, red. It's kind of like the opposite point on the color wheel, more or less, right? You know, here's the color I selected. If I go across, here is the opposite color on the color wheel, more or less. And so that's kind of how the, uh, the tool chooses a default color to swap it to. Now, what do these range and amount sliders mean for the target color? Well, range means how much or how little of that target color should I replace? And it's really like, you know, increasing the sensitivity or decreasing the sensitivity. If I push this down to zero, you know, we'll see less of that color here. If I zoom up in the hood area, like right up in here, we've got some of those blues in there. And as I push, that range farther and farther, we see more and more of that take on our color change, our new color. So first thing you wanna do when you're working with this tool is manipulate the range. You wanna dial in the right uh, color matching to suit your scene. And also pay attention to what's happening throughout the entire photo. Look, I've pushed this up pretty far. Check out what's happening down here in the wheel, right? So in the wheel of this car on the tire, I'm picking up more red. There's just, you know, some more red happening. And if I turn this off really quick, I kind of see, all right, there is some blue there. There is, you know, some some uh, coloration on that wheel. And so it, it kind of makes sense, but it, it feels a little more distracting. Certainly feels a little more distracting on the white wall. And so these are the mental notes we're making as we're doing this color replacement. What other areas might I need to do a little tweaking on later? Okay, uh, as far as the amount is how much or how strong, I guess how uh, much or how strong do you want the color replacement to be, right? So the amount being basically to replace none of the color, replace some of the color, replace all of the color. Uh, usually you're leaving this pretty high because you're doing a kind of a color replacement, but you can do kind of a mix. And this becomes a matter of choice. You can either just keep the amount pushed all the way up or you can dial it back and end up with a little bit of a mix of a color. But you know, pushing it all the way up and then maybe, you know, say I, for example, say I like this color, it's kind of like a muted purple or something. Well, I could just choose a muted purple as my target color or I could you know, manipulate it here. It's just a matter of preference, whatever you prefer to do. I think I'll push that range back up a little bit. Okay, there we go. Now for the color change, what color do I want it to be? Uh, you can control that with your hue and your saturation sliders, or 
actually hue, saturation, and brightness. All three of these control the target color. I can do that in a color wheel on Mac, and I think on Windows, um, someone commented on a different video. There is a way to do this in Windows. I've already forgotten, so please do <laughs> comment again. But I can just push this around here, and as you notice, as I move things around, obviously the car is changing color, but notice the sliders, right? All of the sliders are changing too, and if I do this one, I'll see the brightness slider change as well, and this, these, these sliders versus the color wheel, they both control the same thing. So whether or not you would like to work with a color wheel or you prefer to work with the sliders or you like me, I usually come into the color wheel and it's kind of like, eh, I kind of like, I kind of like it around here. That's pretty close. And now let me fine tune with my saturation, my brightness. Yeah, it's a little bit too orange. Let me dial that back to something a little more red. You know, so I'll work with both of them and get things, you know, dialed in as much as I like them. So that's the fundamentals of how replace color works. Now we talked about a couple of things in there, you know, making sure you get the range set, but also doing a little mental uh, scan, a visual scan of your photo, making some mental notes about what might need to be cleaned up or changed. And there's a couple of things we saw. We saw some things in the tire. We saw some things in the white wall. But there's also one other spot I want to point out in this photo in particular this reflection here of like a pillar out in the background, the coloration just didn't get picked up very well. And this, this uh, like kind of slate grayish type thing, that's a tough tone to pick up because there's not really a lot of color in there. And so little artifacts like that you want to look for and maybe clean up. And so let me now show you some techniques for doing a little bit of cleanup with this. We'll start with the more obvious one, masking and that's to deal with places where the color replacement has touched things that you don't want it to touch. This tire tread here with our masking tools like all of our filters that we have in effects we can do masking. So I'll open up the masking area my brush is selected by default it is set to paint out and let's make that a little bit bigger and I'll just start removing that color replacement from the white wall and I'm not even using the perfect brush yet, so I'm, I'm just being a little bit particular with where I brush. If I need to turn on the perfect brush, which we'll do for the next part, right there, and I can just start to kind of click through here and take care of the dark parts. Looks like I overclicked on that one there. Let's undo a few times. There we go. Let's get that a little bit smaller. Be a little more particular because that dark blue I was originally on the car and this dark red, they are close to each other. Got to be careful. Let's work through there. All right, I don't need the perfect brush anymore. That's Command or Control R to toggle that. Your keyboard shortcuts are always very helpful when you're doing masking. Okay, looking pretty good. And I'll turn that perfect brush back on one more time to get into the little spots right there at the edge of the white wall just doing some single clicks around that to clean it up let's take a view looks pretty close maybe right through here I could be a little more accurate one more time yeah not too bad you kind of can tell where the where the wheel is now right so we can just finish off clicking through there making sure we didn't have any errant color removal on the wheel. Okay, so that's looking really good now. So now when we do before and after, now that tire just still looks natural, right? It just looks it looks good. It's not uh, having, you know, reddish stuff coming on the white wall. When the car was blue, it, it seemed to blend in better, right? You know, just like the, the the tire tread and the blue tint of the car blended together well, but doing a color replacement, hmm, not so good. Uh, some other spots where I see that there is certainly some red being picked up, which may at first look awkward. When I zoom in on the fenders, right, we see the reflections here, right, before and after, but it makes sense. There is blue tint in here from this, and when we turn this on, now we see red in there. If that is an area that is like a problem for you, you have a couple of choices. You can do more masking, but at a lower opacity. You can also explore the blending options that are in every filter in 
in the, in the effects area, and I can protect the highlights. Let me just push that really far. You can see the chrome changing, right? I wouldn't want to do it so harsh, but I could do a little bit, just enough to kind of take the edge off, right? And if that still wasn't enough, go back to our masking tools. I have my brush, and maybe I'll take a very low, you know, lower flow, very low opacity and I'll keep my perfect brush turned on for this and I'll just work on this fender for example just to take some of the edge off you have these options here so this is the fine tuning that you'll do for a really really clean color replacement the heavy lifting is done for you by the filter and then you get the the tiny bits of cleanup now what about this problem area we have over here right this pillar where we have this reflection and obviously some of the reflection let me turn off our color replacement for a minute some of that reflection, we have the car that's blue, it's throwing off blue light, it's hitting this relatively shiny painted pillar that's reflecting back some of that blue. And so we almost have like a double reflection going on here and some of that's showing back up. And so part of this matched our selected color replacement. Some of it didn't, it just became this very muddy slate gray type tone. Well, we could use our masking tools, we could grab a brush, we could say paint out, and uh, you know, try to say a uh, half opacity or something like that to try and, and downplay this replacement. But that's really not looking too good. I mean, we could just try to remove it all. But when we look at the photo in full, this now becomes glaringly awkward right so that's not gonna work let me undo those brush strokes zoom back in here uh, you know how could we fill in some of the color here and here uh, a couple of choices we could add a second color replace filter and, and and do things with that or we could look at local adjustments and masking and it's the local adjustment route that I find to be a better choice for this type of work so let me go over to the locals before I go to the locals actually let me pop in here and I'm just going to copy the exact like ruddy, rusty orange color I've been using for the color replacement. I'll go over to Locals. You can see I've done this once before in a different iteration of the photo. Open up an adjustment, zero out all the tools. We have a Paint with Color option. I'll set that to be the exact same color that we used for the replacement. And the mode, there's Solid Paint, Replace Color, and Classic. I'll choose Replace Color. So now I do have access to all of these different tones now, but first and foremost, if I paint in, let's push my opacity up kind of high so we can see what gets painted in. You do want to be a little careful with the brush because, you know, I had the perfect brush turned on, because this is a replace color tool, right? And so as I push into other areas, notice I've got a new line happening, right? Um, I can take my feather all the way to zero and try to just really get that edge going there right I can I can fill in stuff like this and that kind of works and then I have to reach for things like opacity on the filter itself that's kind of looking pretty good maybe uh, try to smooth that out there right maybe something like that uh, I'll just work on this one side for now try to fill things in inside of our masking tools we can push the feather of that mask. Usually, that's, that's actually a very terrible choice for this one. That's not going to be so good at all. But uh, we want to try and grow that mask a little bit more. So kind of just nudging it out here. We have our other mask tools like Refine with Chisel. We can add pixels and try to just kind of nudge more pixels out into that little seam there. We have our Blur tool switch that to our normal operation amount can be very low and just try to smooth that edge out so you start to get the idea here but the key thing is using a local adjustment where you have that paint with color option use the replace color mode it really works well in tandem with the replace color filter now the one last thing I wanted to show you in this going back to the effects module is sometimes there are some just very nice built-ins and so I'll add a second replace color here let me turn off my red car this is my red car for now I'll turn that off and uh, I should turn off my local as well 
But in the changes here, right, sometimes you just get a really nice look. And for this scene, this little like yellow to red option before and after, that's accenting everything underneath. Like the concrete took on a little bit more of a reddish tone than before. Right? You get a little more oranges happening in here because we're pushing those yellows toward this red. And it's having to be a really nice accent. Uh, you see a little bit in the orange trim in the background, but it's surrounded the car quite nicely. And so don't overlook the built-ins, and at the very least, they can give you a good starting point. Um, let's see, all said and done, for this photo, I, I still liked kind of the, the blue. So I went with uh, yellow uh, to red for that, that underneath thing. And then the blue car did the, did my blue thing. I still have to finish off my, my locals. Uh, I had fixing up the pillar, so I kind of smoothed that out. I have a little more work to do on that. But this is how the replace color filter works. And like I said, the replace color filter will do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. You spend your time paying attention to the finer details, work the range on the color selection, and then look for areas where you may have to do a little masking or a little local adjustment with the Replace Color Paint tool. Hope you found the video useful. If you got questions, go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.